Welcome everyone to our session on the IT checklist for securing remote work at SMPs. In this session, we're going to deep dive a bit into identity security. My name is, my name is David Bierman Burr. I'm a security architect with Microsoft. I spend most of my time working with our distribution partners and MSPs in the SMB channel. And with me today is Christina Murillo. Christina, would you like to tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. Hi, I am a senior program manager on the M365 security engineering team, and I also work with partners, MSPs, and other MSPs and our SMB customers. So today we're going to just cover a few things off the checklist. Um, Christina's going to walk us through some backgrounds on identity or background information on identity protection, specifically around identity security. Um, when we're going to talk about security defaults and conditional access, and we'll show you guys the checklist, show you how to get it, and I'll tell you a little bit more about that. So, Christina, can you tell us? Um, this is going to lead us into identity security at Microsoft. Absolutely. Thanks, David. So, security perimeters were simpler in the old world. But the world we know today is hyper-connected. The impact of COVID-19 has not only increased IT complexity, cyber attacks and threats, it has also moved the perimeter from a device in an office building behind a firewall to any device anywhere on the planet. The confines can no longer be the physical perimeter of your organization. The only constant is user identity. In this new paradigm, we must assume that every resource is on the open internet. So with your apps, user identities, and devices in the cloud, every access request must now be verified. Microsoft 365 Business Premium provides the ability to verify identity, devices, apps, and risk signals before allowing access. So small businesses are particularly vulnerable to cyber threats. Unfortunately, many wait until they have a significant breach before taking action. Hey, David, I know you work with partners all the time. Any real world examples of this you can share? Oh, we have lots. Um, one of the most notable though, um, involved uh, $1.9 million loss from a, a small specialty manufacturer. Um, you know, they, it started with a phishing attack. And unfortunately, the cyber uh, criminals were able to compromise the administrative accounts and compromise their email system and redirect uh, payment, a vendor payment to uh, somewhere it wasn't supposed to go. But this was a really sophisticated attack that actually had a, kind of a two prong um, approach to get away with things. So it actually tricked another farmer to um, forward the money um, on, on to Vietnam. What was really significant about this one is, um, you, you know, you, the, the business was able to partially recover some of this money, but they actually had a lot of time getting help with the incident because it fell below the FBI's threshold of getting involved in such things because it was less than $2 million. So let's talk about some of the ways we can protect our customers from these kinds of threats. Most users have multiple usernames and passwords for many of their commonly used apps. It is important, however, to establish a single common user identity so that users don't need separate credentials and personas for every application. Um, another benefit of establishing a single user identity is that you get the benefits of an integrated solution and advanced security capabilities like multi-factor authentication. So when setting up a tenant, one of your first tasks will be choosing between hybrid or cloud authentication. Routing authentication through Azure Active Directory gives you full visibility and control into each access session, the resources accessed, and the conditions of that access. We know that every company's situation is slightly different, so we provide a couple of different options. One possibility is to authenticate directly to Azure AD with no other identity store uh, connectivity. Uh, however, if you or your customer uses Active Directory, then we recommend a hybrid approach using Azure AD Connect to synchronize the domain to Microsoft 365. You can set up AD synchronization using the identity wizard in the onboarding hub. Excellent. So, Christina, I, I kind of get it that Azure AD can protect, you know, my Microsoft, um, pro you know, properties and identities. Are you saying I can also use Azure AD to pro protect other things like, you know, a finance application that doesn't come from Microsoft? Absolutely. So the benefit of integrating your applications uh, with Azure AD is that you are able to leverage and um, leverage the security capabilities that Azure AD provides for the cloud for your cloud applications. You can extend those out to your on-premises and other applications as well. Oh, awesome. Yeah. So we all know that passwords have been the mainstream form of authentication, but as we've seen time and time again, this security measure is far from infallible. Here are some worrying facts about passwords. The bottom line is that we cannot rely on passwords alone. 
Using multi-factor authentication is one of the easiest and most effective ways to improve your organization's security posture. The quickest way to enable MFA for your admins and users is through security defaults. Security defaults makes it easier to protect your organization from these attacks with pre-configured basic level security settings. You can enable security defaults in the Azure portal. Hey David, why don't you show us how to enable MFA? Sure, Christina. The first thing I'm going to show are two identity security features I recommend enabling right away. The first is self-service password reset, or SSPR, and the second is combined security information registration. It is important to enable users to reset their own passwords when using MFA, and the information requested from the users for these two features is similar. Combined registration is simple, easy, and may help reduce confusion by only asking for the registration information one time. So I start from the Microsoft 365 Admin Center, and I'll open the Azure Active Directory Admin Center. I then browse to Azure Active Directory, Password Reset. Next, I enable SSPR for all the users and click Save. Combined registration is enabled by default for all tenants created after August 15th. Um, to enable combined registration in older tenants, I'm going to browse to Azure Active Directory, User Settings, and then I select Manage User Feature Preview Settings. I enable kind, combined registration for all users and click Save. And that's it. Now that we have combined registration for SSPR and MFA, let's have a look at the user experience. First, I'm prompted to get the Microsoft Authenticator app. I already have it on my device, so I'm just going to open it and choose Next here. I'm then prompted to add an account inside the Microsoft Authenticator app, so I do that by pressing the plus sign and selecting Worker School, and then Next here. I scan the QR code from within the Authenticator app and press Next. The service sends a notification prompt to my phone, so I'm going to wait for that and approve it when it comes in. Next, I enter my mobile telephone number for SMS verification. I then verify SMS by entering the code I just received and clicking Next. SMS is verified and combined registration is complete. Now I'll show how to enable MFA with security defaults. Starting from the Microsoft 365 Admin Center, I open the Azure Active Directory Admin Center. I then browse to Azure Active Directory, Properties, Manage Security Defaults. Security defaults turns on MFA for all users and admins by policy, so I don't have to worry about forgetting to turn it on for individual users. It also disables legacy authentication. Under Enable Security Defaults, I select Yes, and then Save. Some customers will want to use conditional access policies for more granular control of identity security, including MFA. You can use conditional access to make exceptions for limited access by legacy apps while keeping the user and admin's identities protected by MFA. For example, I might want to make an exception for a help desk app that requires the IMAP email protocol. It is important to understand that we must disable security defaults to use conditional access policies. These two features are mutually exclusive. I'll now disable security defaults by returning to Manage Security Defaults under Azure Active Directory Properties. If you disable defaults, to use conditional access, the first thing you should do is configure equivalent policies. Follow the step-by-step -step instructions for configuring equivalent policies after clicking on the Learn More link under Manage Security Defaults. The step-by-step -step guides for equivalent policies to security defaults are listed at the bottom of the page. We have Require MFA for Administrators, Require MFA for Azure Management, Block Legacy Authentication, and Require MFA for Users. Some partners asked me if they could simply implement the policy for all users to co cover the other scenarios, and technically you could, but I recommend configuring the individual policies because it's simpler to customize later. 
Next, I'll demonstrate how to configure the first equivalent policy, Require MFA for Administrators. Browse to Azure Active Directory, Security, Conditional Access. I'll select New Policy, and I'll name this policy Require MFA for Administrators. Under Assignments, select Users and Groups, and I'll include all of the recommended roles in the Equivalent Policy article. I have Authentication Administrator, Billing Administrator, Conditional Access Administrator, Exchange Administrator, Global Administrator, Help Desk Administrator, Password Administrator, Security Administrator, SharePoint Administrator, and User Administrator. I'm also going to exclude my Emergency Access account so I can recover if I make a mistake and accidentally lock myself out. Under Cloud Apps or Actions, select Include, then All Cloud Apps. Under Conditions, Client Apps, click Yes to Configure and leave the default options selected. Then, under Access Controls, Grant, I'll grant access but require multi-factor authentication. Now I'll confirm my settings, make sure everything's correct, and enable the policy by turning it on. Finally, I click Create to enable the policy. And that's it. My next steps would be to create the remaining equivalent policies and then add custom policies I need, such as one to require a compliant device when accessing company data. All right, so we've shown quite a few things in our demo. Um, Bring it all together. We want to make sure we encourage customers to choose cloud authentication when they can. Um, hybrid is, you know, acceptable options, but it's really nice to move customers into a cloud authentication paradigm when possible and allow them to go serverless so we can get better visibility into authentications and protect those identities. Um, we showed you guys how to do, you know, easily enable self-service password reset as well as combined registration so the users have a nice onboarding uh, experience for the password reset and MFA at the same time. We showed how to quickly and easily enable security defaults, which turns on the MFA and turns off legacy auth with one click. And we also showed how to set up conditional access for those cases where we need a little bit more control. Um, I want to remind everyone to always include and add, uh, exclude an admin account when setting up conditional access so you don't lock yourself out. We'll prompt you for that uh, in the portal. Best practice there is just to create an exclusion group and use that every time. And most importantly, ensure your users know what to expect. If you put together an SMB checklist and practical guide, you could reach it at aka.ms forward slash SMB checklist. Let's walk through it. So here we have the practical guide for securing remote work using M365 Business Premium. Uh, you can link to a PDF copy of the guide right from this blog post. Notice here we have much, many of the same topics we just covered, including up setting up your tenant, choosing between hybrid and cloud identity. And I also wanted to point out that we have two sets of recommended settings. These are not prescriptive and they're just, they're just guidelines. Um, in the normal scenario column, these will generally map well to a customer that's, um, you know, is concerned about security and wants to be secure versus a, a higher risk scenario or customer with a higher concern for risk that's willing to invest more money, time, and other resources into being secure. So in the first example, this is generally going to be you know, someone like a manufacturing shop or a retail uh, store where the higher risk scenario could be a law firm with uh, dealing with uh, celebrity clients or high profile litigation or a doctor's office that's concerned about HIPAA compliance. Um, as we walk through, you'll see we have a, a, a little, a short narrative and links to our official product documentation for every one of these settings as well as we follow through with our identity protection. And there's quite a bit more that covers email and remote, remote access. Um, the purpose of this guide is to help you, the, the partner, plan a deployment to make sure you don't forget anything and have a reasonable set of recommendations from us to fall back on. 
as well as make sure that everything's covered when you're deploying tenants uh, for your customers. So now you have the IT checklist. You can also learn more about Microsoft 365 Business Premium at aka.ms forward slash m365bp. And you can reach out to us at aka.ms forward slash SMB Tech Community. We really appreciate your time and hope you have a great afternoon. Thanks again for watching. Thanks, everyone.